Can Remember you, uh, David Jones, I guess many of y'all don't know him, but that would be Courtney's stepdad. I uh, saw him the other day, and if he don't get a liver transplant in like a year, it's, you know, it's over. A he looks, got to go on the dial. Uh, he said looks really bad, and he, he, he told us, he said he appreciated prayers for everybody, you know, from everybody. Also, Bobby Coomer passed away. Keep remembering Margaret. They put her back in the hospital today. She's not doing too good. Come home one night? Yeah, last night. She right back. Number 10? Yeah, 10, 10. Yeah. Remember the Kingsford employees? They got some not good news today. That's right. Remember this. Uh, not good news. Keep lifting up Lola. She's very, I know she desires some prayer tonight. Keep remembering. Other. We need to pray one for another. Amen. Amen. We, we are fighting a common enemy. Yeah. And I think the church needs to understand that tonight. That we're not fighting against flesh and blood. But there is one who would seek to destroy and divide and try to conquer. But he has no authority. Amen. He has Amen. no power. And his name is Satan. But he was defeated at Calvary's cross Amen. some 2,000 years yes. ago. Amen. And Jesus made a choice. <laughs> and from now, more than ever before, we're in a battle like never before. Because we're nearing the end of the church age. And Satan's going to do all he can. And we're, we're, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of darkness and the powers of hell that come against us. But greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 Let's pray tonight. Heavenly Father, we come before your holy presence. Lord, tonight in the mighty name that is above every name, that wonderful, precious, holy name, the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you and praise you tonight for all of your goodness. And Lord, we thank you tonight for your love towards us, God, that has reached down, Lord, into the depths of sin that we were in and picked us up, God, and changed us and saved us, Lord. And God, I thank you tonight for your mercy, Lord, and your grace that is poured out upon us. And Lord, tonight we thank you for that wonderful plan of salvation that was devised many, many years ago, Lord, and all that would come to you in faith, Lord, and trust in that, upon that name, Lord, and believe in that sacrificial death and burial and resurrection, Lord, but be saved and born again. And I thank you tonight night, Lord, that that plan included all, uh, and Lord, it included me in that plan, uh, as rotten as I was, Lord, and now today, uh, that God, you still see something in us, Lord, uh, that God, you would send your son to this earth, uh, and he would bleed and die for us, Lord, uh, and God, tonight, Lord, we thank you, uh, and Lord, will you give us that promise uh, that you're coming back Sunday after a while for your church? Uh, and Lord, we're going to leave up out of here uh, and all these troubles and sorrows and afflictions we go through, Lord. Uh, and that moment is just going to seem like light affliction. Uh, Lord, when we step over into that place of uh, uh, beauty that's beyond compare, uh, where there is no sorrow and no sickness and no division uh, and no tears and no crying uh, and no more death. Uh, and Lord, tonight we're longing for that beautiful city. Uh, but God, by we're here, Lord. You gave us that commission uh, to occupy till you come. Uh, and Lord, we see today that much of the church, Lord, is just playing around. Uh, our souls, Lord, are dying, lost without you. Uh, but God, I thank you, Lord, that here uh, you've established a body of believers, Lord, uh, that has a passion and a zeal uh, to see, Lord, your souls be delivered and set free. Uh, and God, tonight I pray. Uh, that you'll keep that passion within us burning, Lord. That God in this community and all over, that folks would 
see that there's something, Lord, that's different about us. And God, they'll have their, their curiosity, Lord, will, will increase within them. And they'll ask, Lord, what it is that we have. But God, that we'll be ready to give account, Lord, of the reason, of the change, and the hope that we have. And God, I pray tonight that you'll help us, Lord, this church. Lord, as we go forward and press forward the mark, I pray, Lord, everything that Satan will try to do to try to hinder and stop us, Lord, from receiving that blessing from you. I pray that, God, we take authority in the name of Jesus tonight, that Satan has no hold on this place, nor any of your children. And tonight, Lord, we claim the blood that has all power tonight. And by that blood, Lord, tonight we know that we're victors. And God, tonight we thank you and praise you for the many blessings that's been poured out. And tonight we lift up these who are sick, Lord, those that have been mentioned and those that have loved ones, Lord, that has went out into eternity. We pray that you'll comfort the brokenhearted, and Lord, that you'll touch the those that are in sorrow and depressed and oppressed uh, and distressed, Lord, tonight. Uh, I pray, Lord, that you'll move every mountain and break every chain. Uh, and God, tonight we see uh, that it's time for your church, your people, uh, to rise up and get serious about the kingdom. Uh, that, Lord, now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed. Uh, and God, tonight, what a the joy it is in serving you. And we count it a great honor and a privilege, Lord, to be your people tonight. And Lord, we love you with all we have. And God, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Bless the word tonight and anoint, Lord, the message that you've given for tonight. And Lord, I pray uh, that you will know every year that we may hear uh, and receive in faith your word uh, as it is your word tonight, God. Uh, and we ask it in Jesus' name and all God's people say it. Amen. 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 And amen. Now, if you really love the Lord tonight, would you give him a big hand? Thank you. Uh, 
He told Abraham, I want you to get up from this place you're at and separate yourself. Honey, you got to separate yourself tonight if you want the blessings of God. If you want all that God has for you, you can't live worldly one minute and live spiritually the next minute. Honey, it's a 24 hour day, seven day a week walk with the Lord. You can't be saved half the week and live like the world the rest of the week. Honey, you, you, if you've been saved, you got what I got. It's the same exact salvation. Right. And when I got saved, the Lord changed me. Right. That's what salvation is. It's a change. And if you say, if you didn't get changed, when you got saved and you went right back out, living in your sin, honey, let's just get honest about it yes, tonight. Jesus. You didn't get saved. Here, 
was something beautiful and wonderful. And let me tell you something. When God takes away what he's given, it's hard to get it back. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And so many are missing out today. But I want you to understand what I'm feeling the Spirit is telling me. Is that promised land typifies our spiritual possessions that we have in Christ. We have something in the Lord. I'm not just saved tonight. That's right. Amen. I said Amen. I'm not just saved. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 I've got something. I said I've got something. Amen. That, that the Lord gave. Yes. And I'm going to reach out and possess it. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, it's not anything the world can give. That's right. Praise the Lord. Now, we read last week, Obadiah, verse 17, where God said to Israel, they, they will one day, there will be holiness in Jerusalem, and there will be a day when they'll come back, and they'll serve God. It'll be the day when Jesus returns all the way back to this earth, and Israel is going to accept him as their Savior and their Messiah, and they're going to come into the land. Every Jew will be brought back to Israel by that time. And when Jesus comes back and sets up his kingdom on this earth for a thousand years, Israel is going to receive their possessions. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And but until then, they have walked in rebellion. They have walked in discord. They have walked in disobedience to the will of God. And they've not received their possessions. Matter of fact, they've not seen nothing but resistance and war ever since they denied the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And in the spiritual sense, that's exactly what happens when you let go of the Lord. That's right. Nothing Amen. but strife. Hallelujah. Now, Joshua chapter 1. Praise the Lord. I, don't, I didn't even get caught up in all that. <laughs> I, got, I got about three hours here I want to get out. Let her go. <laughs> the deacon said, let her go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Just the chapter 1, mm -hmm. verse 1. Tonight we're talking about on the way to the possession. On the way to the possession. And Joshua chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 1, says, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, Moses represented the law. And you can try to keep the law all you want to, but the law could never bring Israel into this possession. Right. The law had to die out. And today, under the new covenant, you can't receive of the Lord through the law. Right. You can't try to live by the law and receive the possessions of the Lord. Right. You can make up everything in the church bylaws and church rules and try to put everybody under some kind of legalistic right. system. You're not going to receive no. any blessing from the Lord by keeping the law because we're under grace. And the law, number one, was not meant for the Gentiles. It was meant for the Jews. Amen. 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 And so the law can never bring deliverance. And the law can never bring the spiritual possession. And so the law had to die out. And when Jesus died on the cross, the law was fulfilled. Hallelujah. And Jesus became everything. And the penalty of the law and everything that I backed up in my account against the Lord. All that day that I was saved and forgiven of my sins was wiped clean. Yes. And I was washed clean by the blood Amen. of the Lamb. The Lord can not do that. And so Moses is dead. The law's died out now. And God said, now therefore I rise. And I'm trying to not blow in the trumpet. Hallelujah. Saying to the church, arise. It's time to get up out of the place we've been in for a long time. And it's time to march to that place that God has prepared. I'm talking about spiritually tonight. I know it's Wednesday night, but my Lord, I feel without the spirits in this place. And it's time for the church to get out of these old cold, dead ways and think it's all right and be content with it and understand. Much more. Yes. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. 
unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. So in the mind of God, he's done giving it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. It was just up to his people to take it. And so he said, every place the sole of your foot. And so everywhere you walk, it's going to be your possession. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the hot tides, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Now, if you look around, all of this was about 500,000 square miles. Now, I'm not trying to get into a big geological education thing here, but I think it's kind of neat that all of this was 500,000 square miles that God said was yours. You know how much of it that they took and possessed? They took about 30,000 square miles. Well. That's all they possessed. And we got a lot of Christians like that today. Right. God has given it all. And yet they're not taken. And they just want a little bit. All that they just feel like they need. And then that's the rest. They don't need no more. That's right. But I have to I all God's got for me. Amen. I need it I all he's got for me. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, don't hold back nothing. That's right. Amen. 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 And then he said, There shall not any man be able to stand before you. He's talking about before Joshua. All the days of thy life, as I was with Moses, so I'll be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear to their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law. Now, I know we just talked about the law, but now today under the new covenant, we would replace that word law. What was the law to them? To them in that day would be the word of God to us today. And so what we would say under the new covenant, we would say that we ought to do all according and observe according to what God's word tells us to do. Right. Man. You can do everything, and that may sound good, but if it don't line up with the Word of God, you've got nothing. Amen. Amen. And so he said, Only be thou strong, observe all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means study it. Study it. Amen. Study Amen. it. I don't know how many times I've been quoted, especially when I first started preaching it. And people want to argue with you, debate the Word of God. And, and I open up the Word, take it back to them. And I tell them, I say, study the Word. Don't come to me with opinions. That's right. Amen. Study Amen. the Word. And so he said, meditate there day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all, to all that is written therein for them. Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Can I tell you tonight? It's the same way tonight. Yeah. Same yeah. way. The prescription has not changed. And so he said, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. Then Joshua commanded the officer of the people, saying, in verse 11, where I want to come from tonight, says, Pass through the host, the army, the Israelite camp. He said, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare you victuals. That means get yourself some food provision together. For within three days, you shall pass over this Jordan. Amen. Now, let me say that one more time. He, God said, it wasn't any man said, God said, Amen. in three days, you're going to pass over this Jordan. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, you're going to go in to possess the land, glory to God, yes. which the Lord your God gives you to possess. Hallelujah. Amen. And so tonight we're talking about for just a few moments on the way to the possession of now, tonight we're talking about uh, coming to the Jordan River. Now, the children of Israel, God had brought them out of Egypt's land. He brought them out miraculously, out the Red Sea. He brought them out 
Now he's getting ready to bring them into the land by another miracle. And you see tonight, we see the children of Israel camping here on the banks of the Jordan River. They're getting ready to go into this place that God has promised to give them. It was their possession. It was a place that they could raise their children, a place they could raise their family. It would be a place where God would meet with them and they could worship Jehovah. But God said, you camp here for three days and then you're going to pass over this Jordan. And so crossing the Red Sea was one thing. But yeah. now crossing the Jordan River is going to be a totally new thing. Because once they get across the Jordan River to get to the possession, once they get across the Jordan, there's no turning back now. Hallelujah. There's some gospel obstacles you're going to have to go through. But God said, be of good courage. Continue on. I'm with you. No, I'll never abandon you. I'll never fail you. You're going to have some battles on this way to the possession. You're going to have some adversity on this way to the possession. But God said, be of good courage. Be strong. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. I'll be with you. No triple. Hallelujah. You're going to pass over that Jordan River. Hallelujah. Amen.
Holy Ghost out that window. And when we come in to take the city, uh, we'll see that scarlet red rope. Uh, much like when God said, I see the blood. Uh, I'll pass. I will pass. I will pass over you. Uh, and that little harlot woman, that little prostitute that needed to be saved, gave her heart to the Lord. And not only her, but her whole household was saved. Uh, born again and when they came into the city uh, she was saved and delivered and rescued alive and she became uh, the great great grandmother of King David yeah. and if you get to the gospels uh, you look down to the genealogy of Jesus and she is in the genealogy of Jesus. Yeah. Ain't God good Ain't Yes. 
as they go. And he said, I want the priest to bear on their shoulders the ark of the covenant. Yep. The ark of the covenant of God was a type. It was the visible representation of the presence of Almighty God. And that ark of the covenant was to go with them in every battle that they went. In every place that they went. I'm talking about tonight. Everything you do, if you don't have the presence of God, say, I don't want just with me. I got to have him before me. Yes, amen. 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 Uh, and that way I don't have to wait to call on him when I need him. Amen. I'm going to trust him to go before me. And so they were to take, the priest were to take the ark. And now under the new covenant, who's the priesthood? Jesus. The church. And it's the royal priesthood, right. Peter said. Jesus, the great high priest. And today, if you want to go into that possession, you're going to have to cross the Jordan. But in order to get across that Jordan, you're going to have to have the presence of God. You're going to have to have him go before you. Everywhere you go. Don't think for one second. Let me tell you how bad it's gotten with it. Not bad, but you know what I mean. It's gotten to the place when I go to the grocery store. I don't go in and leave the car and go in until I say, Lord, help me buy what we need. Amen. I trust Amen. the Lord in all things. Amen. Not just when it, I'm hurting and I need yeah. Him. I need Him every moment. Right. And I need Him to go before me. And that Ark of the Covenant was a type of the presence of God. And it would go with them everywhere they go. And so this was kind of odd to the rest of the people. And let me say this tonight. Many people have many different callings. Amen. 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 And just because I think it's strange somebody else's calling don't make it evil. Amen. Amen. And let me tell you something tonight. God wants every one of us. And he wants to use every one of us as a vessel that can advance his kingdom and build the kingdom of God. And you can't do one thing, whatever your calling might be, you can't do one thing outside of the presence of God. That's right. Amen. 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 So now they're standing there in that rolling Jordan River. But on the other side is the possession that God has for his children. Yep. So it's going to take some faith. The cross over. Amen. Let me, let me, can I, I'm hurrying. Somebody said hurry. I'm trying. I'm trying to get to the lead of it here. Praise the Lord. Now, he goes on down, verse 6, and the Bible says that that ark was going to lead the way. The only way that God's people was going to accomplish this task <clears throat> was keeping their eyes upon God's presence. He said, I want you to keep that ark about 3,000 feet in front of the people. Why is that? Because that way every single one of God's children could see the presence of God from where they was. You've got to keep your eyes on it. Keep your eyes on him. People have been worried about this and that dimension and this and that going away. Let me tell you the church tonight. If you keep in the power of God, you keep in the spirit of God, there ain't nothing going to go nowhere. There ain't nobody going to go nowhere because the power of God, it's not because of me. It's because we keep our eyes Amen. on the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 And so they were to keep their eyes on that ark. That's why I was 3,000 feet in front of them. So every one of them could see that ark and be led by the presence of God. Now he goes down, and the Bible says uh, down in verse 7, that I, in verse 6, Joshua spoke unto the priest, saying, Take up the ark of the covenant, pass over before the people. And they took up the ark of the covenant and they went before the people. And the Lord said unto Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify thee in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand in the Jordan. Now, as Joshua, he's getting ready to take this great step of faith 
And as he gets ready to see, when you begin to take that great step of faith, that activates the, the power of God in your life. And now God sees the faith of Joshua and God begins to encourage him. You want encouragement from the Lord? Show him your faith. Right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. The Lord will encourage. There's only one thing I can't say enough that all that the Lord is pleased with, and that is your faith. Amen. 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 Without it, it's impossible to please. Him. And so God laid out the plan. It was man that laid out the plan. God laid out the plan. Yep. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And they were to follow it. And you say, what are you talking about? I'm talking about on the way to their <coughs> possession. And tonight I'm afraid that we are in a time where much of the church, and I believe much of it might even be here, where you can preach and preach the word of God, and people just blow it off like it's right. nothing. And they're missing out on the possession. Yep. And they think today, it's amazing, folks today at church, think that just a little move of God in the service that, that means that they've been filled with the Spirit, and that's wonderful. No, let me tell you, when you get a move of God and filled with the Spirit, it don't just start and stop in place and here and there. Amen. It's with you every moment. Right. Amen. You'll have it when you get up in the morning. That's right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Amen, right. brother. And let me tell you, I can't say it enough. And folks can say and be upset with me for saying it, but I'm saying it to encourage this church. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus and let Amen. God devise every single plan. Not Amen. man. Amen. Amen. It's not right. man gets involved. It's getting ready to be destroyed. Amen. Amen. But when God makes the plan, He'll bring it right on through the pass. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so now God sees the faith of Joshua. And now we go on down, and, and the Bible says in verse 9, Joshua said unto the children of Israel, he said, he, uh, he said, Joshua said, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Gergesites, and the Amorites, and the death is sight. And I'll say tonight, he'll make them out of sight. Amen. <laughs> All of those tribes were those that were outside of the covenant of God. They were of the world. And they were types of the flesh that you and I are going to have to battle. You see, you, you can't get that possession from God in the flesh. The flesh can't get it. Hallelujah. The flesh is not saved. The right. flesh doesn't belong to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. It's going back to the dust from which it came. Hallelujah. And so the, uh, the Bible said, Joshua said, you shall know. We, he said, without fail, the Lord will drive out. You see, you if you want to get the blessing of God and get that possession, you have to put the flesh in submission. Yeah. You yeah. have to learn to tame the flesh. And a lot of it's going to be right here. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get that another time. <laughs> that little smallest sliver of the body Amen. is worse than the, a nuclear bomb. <laughs> so much so, James said it's so far hell. And once it starts, it's like a wildfire. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. Somebody said, that. now you're really getting in my business. <laughs> Well, if you're in that kind of business, you better get out. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right, get quiet in here. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So number one, the flesh is going to have to be defeated. That's what all these tribes typify is the flesh. Yep. And though the flesh is going to have to, you're going to have to put the flesh in subjection. And if you've been saved, the Bible says that old sin nature shall not have dominion over you. Amen. 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 There is a way that people say, I just cannot. Yes, you can. Yes. Let me refrain to that. You can. Amen. But Amen. you can. Amen. Because God has made a way. Right. You can right. because you can place your faith in the finished work at Calvary. That's right. And God can because he'll see your faith and he'll work and faith moves the hand of God. Yep. Amen. 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 I better move on. Amen. Get quiet. The whole the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into Jordan. Now therefore take you twelve men 
out of the tribes of Israel, out of every tribe of man shall come to pass, as soon as the soles of the feet of the priests that bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth shall rest in the waters of Jordan, that the waters of Jordan shall be cut off from the, from the waters that come down from above, and they shall stand upon a heap. And it came to pass when the people removed from their tents to pass over Jordan, and the priests bear the ark of the covenant before the people, and as they that bear the ark were coming to Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, the edge of the water. See, God didn't move until their feet was in the water. That's right. Amen. Amen. Step into the water. Yeah. Way out a little bit deeper. You got to wet your feet in the water of His love. Come on and step into the water. Way out a little bit deeper. Come join an angel singing praises to the Lamb of God. They started to not move. Why? Because he was waiting to see their faith. Amen. He did not act till they stepped in the water. Amen. And some of them took me to get out of their tents. Amen. Come Amen. on. Amen. Get out of the tents. Yep. Hallelujah. And I'm going to close what Jordan is here in a minute. Praise the Lord. But the Bible says that, and that the waters... Well, let me go back. The feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water for Jordan overflowed all on its banks all the time of harvest. This was the springtime, the rainy season, that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up upon a heap very far from the city of Adam. And God caused it to raise up like a dam. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. On one side and a dam on the other. Yep. And the Bible says that those that came down toward the sea of the plain, even the salt sea fell and were cut off, and the people passed over right against Jericho. Now, what I believe tonight, in verse 17, the Bible says, the priest that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord, who is the priest today in the new covenant? Church. Now, I, I'm, I'm reading this out of the old covenant because Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10, these things were written of all time for our example. Right. And we yeah. would not do the things that they did. And so the Bible says the priests, and today we are the priesthood, the royal priesthood, Jesus the great high priest. The ark of the covenant was the presence of God. And the Bible said they stood firm on the Dry right. ground. Yeah. Amen. You see, what God wants to do is clear the way for you tonight because He does not want to withhold one thing from you. Amen. If anything is withheld from you, spiritual blessing is withheld. It's because you withheld God from giving it to you. That's right. Yeah. And so they stood there on dry ground. And here's what I believe tonight. That God loves his people so much. He loves you so much. You're his child tonight. Yeah, You're amen. his son. You're his daughter. He knows all about you. He knows your name tonight. Right. You're special to him. You're important to him. And here's what I believe God wants to do tonight. He wants to bring the church over into a place of blessing yeah. and joy and spiritual prosperity and rest and abundance and peace. Yeah. But we're the ones that stand back in the tent. But we need to make our way down. Dip your feet down in the water. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And here's what God was They went there and there was, you know how it is to walk through mud. I think Tessie yeah. does this week. Tessie said, I put my rubber boots on and tried to walk through my garden. <laughs> Yesterday, I think. And I'm telling you, that mud got on the bottom of my boots and I couldn't hardly pick up my feet. And it was getting so heavy. You see, I believe that God... He didn't even, there was no mud nowhere inside in that pad. Because God does not intend for his children to get hung up and uh, spin their wheels down there in the mud and get down there and get caught up. He wants you to pass over. It's easier to walk on dry ground. Now, I'm telling you, my God will make a way. Now, he yeah, likes to work when the canal swim. I'm telling you, in the natural life, it seemed impossible for that swollen mighty river to uh, come up on one side of the heap and on the other side the same way to the natural 
lie. But let me tell you, God does not work in the natural. Amen. Amen. He's Amen. a supernatural God. He's a divine God. He will work in the natural. And neither should we operate in the natural. We ought to operate in the supernatural. And when you allow the supernatural to become your life, the supernatural will be your lifestyle.
Jordan. Thank you, Lord. And now that ark had to go down first. Yes. And then the priests went. Jesus went first. Right. He tasted death for all men. But as Jesus has been raised from the dead, I too have been raised from my spiritual grave. Yes, amen. I am amen. alive in Christ. Hallelujah. And today, that's the first step to that possession what God has for you. You've got to be born again. Amen. Born again. Amen. You've got to die out to self. Heavenly Father, we come before you tonight in Jesus' name. We thank you tonight, Lord, for your word. Lord, I'm so in love, Lord, with your word that it's, it's just not words written on a page, but God, it's those things that come forth from your mind. And Lord, I thank you tonight for these great promises. I thank you, Lord, that your word tells me that and even though it's the most wonderful thing in the world to be saved, I'm so thankful, Lord, that there's so many benefits that come with it. And I thank you, God, for those possessions, Lord, that you have given for your children. And I pray tonight that we can learn a lesson, Lord, from the children of Israel of old. That, God, their possessions are theirs. But, Lord, we've got to reach out and claim it and take hold of those possessions. And Lord, we look around for to me. So many Christians, Lord, tonight that are struggling. <laughs> and so many preachers today that are not giving, Lord, what the sheep need. But God, I thank you for your word. It's a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And I'm so thankful I'm saved. Hallelujah. Thank you for saving my soul. And Lord, never let me forget the value and preciousness of that great gift. Lord, we love you tonight. We praise your holy name. <coughs> and we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Somebody got a word tonight. Praise this the time. I pray with my terrible feeble efforts that you've been blessed and helped tonight by the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God.
got something special that the world don't have. And that's something to think about. Praise the Lord. I don't want, I don't want to take that for granted. That's why I don't want to make them a spare tire in my life. Yeah. No. Hallelujah. I, get, I have more problems than flat tires. <laughs> <laughs> I, need, I need more than that. <laughs> praise the Lord. Somebody else will praise him. Thank you. Thank him for this weather. Amen. Everything was getting brown. Yeah. It was like no more Crunchy. grass, just brown. You know? yeah. And it's like all the farmers had just planted a lot of stuff. Yeah. And it's like, Lord, <coughs> please. <coughs> myself in their shoes and to imagine just standing there looking at that big dam of water oh, yeah. and that big heat just mm. held back by the hand of God. Amen. That had just been amazing. Mm. That's two waters. Two of them, yeah. yeah. Red Sea in there. That's right. This generation has never seen that. Uh, the old generation seen the Red Sea. This group that he brought them out by that miracle, and he's bringing these in by this miracle. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's funny that they exited the same way to come in. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't the word amazing? Amen. God knows what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Man, man just sits and tries to figure things out. Now, yeah. I, I mean, I told I, I don't I don't care to tell the folks guy probably told most. I, I mean, I fought with for two or three months. You, you don't know. I mean, a lot of people has uh, been upset with me, and, and uh, I mean, not upset, mad, but upset and leaving. But you don't understand the battle that I went through uh, yeah. the last two or three months, and uh, the, uh, the nights and tears. Yeah. And uh, and I'll say it because of the old prophets, they questioned the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think nothing wrong with saying, Lord, why? Because he understands our Amen. human mind that we're weak. And Habakkuk asked why. Yeah. And I spent a lot of time, Lord, why? Why? You know. My plan was to stay here till the rapture. <laughs> that may not be your plan, but that was mine. <laughs> God has another plan. Maybe you Amen. Be here. I, I may be here. You might be here. Yeah. Maybe be here. You might be, be, yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <That's possible. laughs> yeah. You think Joe, you know, that water just up high on each side, that was a, you think that was to show people that God had to be one doing it because people yeah. couldn't done what he done. Yeah. For a moment. Show them, yeah, for show the miracle there that he done. Miracles, the thing about miracles is never saved people. Mm -hmm. And miracles have never been a proof to turn people to the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus performed miracle after miracle. And the, right from the Pharisees, and they never still didn't believe in it. No. Mm -hmm. It does not say anywhere where somebody was converted because of a miracle. Right, that's right. It wasn't. And it's the same way in churches today. People see the power of God, but it don't move. It don't start. It be right in front of them. They don't do it. But I'd say that day, now that was a... Uh, <laughs> that dealing with nature. Yeah. All right. Praise the Lord. Don't Donnie look just beautiful. According <laughs> <laughs> to which way you saw Somebody got to brighten you. Yeah, according to how you're looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got to brighten you up. You need your glasses uh -oh. clean. She said I need your glasses. I'm 
Bible Sunday night. Brother uh, Ethan Trump is a pastor. Okay. Brother uh, uh, Benji Blackwell up from Lafayette, Tennessee, is going to be carrying it up. So I would like to, uh, I would like to invite everyone. All right. I appreciate that. Uh, revival with the roll back starts Sunday night. Yeah, 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock. And, uh, and, and, by the way, that is located about, uh, two, about two and a half miles from the Hart County, Green County line. Yeah. And about five miles from the Hart County, yeah. in Big County. Yeah. 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 So, as so we're in Hart County, not in, in Monroe County. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you live pretty close to that. Yeah, right, right. right. There's a singing Saturday night too. Yeah. We're yeah. not in town, but there's a singing Saturday night at the Kansas City Convention Center. Kentucky Southern Gospel Music Singing. Oh, that's yeah, that's I'll take that again. No, and, and uh, I think actually Joey Sexton that all yeah. going to bring a message yeah. to yeah. singing too. So we're going to have a camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, y